Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to the Honey Optics YouTube channel. Live streaming in 4K has been available on YouTube since 2016. And as more devices and cameras are available with 4K capability, it's fast becoming an expectation from your viewers. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to live stream and record in 4K using the popular and free software OBS. If you're gonna live stream in 4K, the Honey Optics cameras are a great choice because they offer two ways to get the 4K video image into your computer without needing additional hardware. You can bring 4K video in using the USB connection on the camera if your camera and computer are gonna be in close proximity to each other. I wouldn't recommend using USB cables over about 15 feet. If you need the camera to be further away, you can use the built-in NDI capability that sends the video over your network. So let me show you both methods. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is download and install OBS. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. To bring video in through USB, just connect a USB-C to USB type A data cable from the camera to your computer and it will automatically be detected and drivers installed just like a webcam. You don't need to install anything else to get the camera to work on your computer. Once the camera is connected, we'll launch OBS. If you're not familiar with how OBS works, this big empty black box here at the top is called the canvas, and whatever you see on the canvas is what's gonna be sent out to your live stream or get recorded. You add content to the canvas by creating scenes, and a scene is a collection of sources. And the sources are where we actually start to bring in things like our cameras and graphics and any other content that we want to use into OBS. And then switch between your content or cameras by switching scenes. So let's create a scene for our USB input from our camera. Click the plus button below scenes and we'll give the scene a name. This name is just for you to identify the scene, so you can name it anything you want. I'll call it Honey Optics USB. And then we'll click the plus button under Sources and select Video Capture Device. Give the source a name as well. Again, you can call it whatever you want. I'll use USB 4K. In the Properties dialog, in the Device dropdown, select UHD Camera. That's how the camera will show up on your computer through USB. For resolution and frames per second type, we want to select custom. Using the USB connection, the resolution of the camera is requested or set by the software, so we want to define it here in OBS. So for resolution, we'll select 3840 by 2160, and for frames per second, we're going to select 30. And that's all we need to do here. Click OK, and the first thing you'll notice is that our camera is much bigger than our canvas, and it's getting cut off. That's because it's coming in at 4K resolution and the canvas isn't set to 4K yet. To fix that, click the Settings button and we're gonna go to the Video page. And you'll notice in the dropdown that the highest resolution available is 2560 by 1440, which is 2K resolution. So in order to get 4K, we're gonna have to manually enter the resolution that we wanna use. Since we have 3840 by 2160 coming in from the camera, We'll enter that for both the canvas and output resolution. I'm also going to be sure and set my frames per second to what I have the camera set to as well. In this case, that was 30 frames per second. Click OK, and now our canvas is set to the right resolution, and we have our full 4K image coming in from the camera. Before we talk about recording and streaming, let's look at getting the video image into your computer using NDI. NDI works over regular CAT cables, and sends video from your camera over your network to your computer. So you can have multiple cameras located wherever your network will reach and bring that into any computer that has access to your network. The first thing you need to do to get NDI to work is to configure your camera for 4K output. In any browser, you can enter the IP address of your camera and log in with the username and password admin and admin. If you haven't already, you may want to go watch our initial camera setup video that will walk you through how to get your camera configured on your network. The browser interface of the camera provides a way to control the camera and also do some configuration. On the video page, the first stream settings control the NDI output. 
So for resolution, make sure you have selected 3840 by 2160. Then for the bit rate, we'll enter the maximum amount of 20,480, and I'm gonna select 30 frames per second for my frame rate. Click Submit, and it prompts me to reboot for those settings to take effect, but I'm gonna wait to reboot until I've made all my changes. On the NDI config page, this NDI local device name is the name the camera will show up on the network as. So especially if you're using multiple cameras, each camera needs to have a unique name defined here. I've called this camera left PTZ1 since I usually set it up on the left side of the room. And that's it, the camera is now configured for 4K output over NDI. Click submit and then go to the system page to reboot the camera and now we're ready to go back to OBS. OBS doesn't natively support NDI, but thankfully there is a free plugin for OBS that adds NDI functionality. You can find a link to download that in the description of this video. You'll need to close OBS and install the plugin, and once that is installed, launch OBS again, and you'll see that there is a new option added to the Sources menu called NDI Source. So let's create a new scene for our NDI input. Click the plus button below Scenes again, and let's call this one Honey Optics NDI. Click the plus button under the Sources and select that NDI Source option. I'll call it NDI 4K. And now in the Properties dialog, in the Source Name dropdown, we'll find our camera on the network, Left PTZ1, which is what we named the camera back on the NDI config page. Make sure Bandwidth is set to Highest, and if you're using multiple NDI cameras, you'll want to set the timing to network. And now we have our camera coming into OBS through NDI. Let's go look at our encoder settings for recording and streaming. Click Settings and go to the Output page. I always change the output mode from Simple to Advanced. It not only gives me more control over my encoder, it also gives me the ability to use different settings for streaming and recording. Now, this would be a good time to pause for a second and talk about some of the requirements for live streaming or even just recording 4K video. The higher resolution and the resulting requirement for a higher bitrate to support that does put a pretty serious demand on the hardware of your computer. You're gonna need a decently specced computer and also a graphics card in that computer that is capable of encoding in order to have a good experience for both you and your viewers. So here on my streaming tab, I'm going to switch from X264, which is the software encoder that uses the CPU of the computer, to NVIDIA NVENC, which will use my graphics card for the encoding. If you have a graphics card that is capable of OBS offloading encoding to it, you should see that listed here. Be sure that rescale output is unchecked, because we want to stream the full resolution from our canvas. As a side note, if you wanted to record in 4K but stream at a lower resolution and bitrate, this is where you could rescale the output down for streaming. Rate control will stick with the default CBR, and now for the bitrate. With a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and 30 frames per second, YouTube recommends that you use a bitrate between 13,000 and 34,000 kbps. Setting the bitrate is kind of a balancing act. A higher bitrate is going to result in a better looking image with less compression artifacts. But it also means a higher load on your computer, specifically the encoder, and it also puts more demand on your internet upload speed. I usually recommend that people have twice the upload bandwidth as their bitrate setting. So if we use that bitrate of 28,480 that our camera is sending in on NDI, we'd need to have about 40 to 50,000 kbps or about 50 megabits per second upload speed from our internet connection. So for this example, I'm gonna use the 20,480 as my bitrate. I've tested that out and I know my computer can handle that and I have an internet connection speed with 60 megabits upload that can sustain that data rate as well. The rest of these settings you can leave as the default. If you do find that your graphics card is overloaded and your encoder is dropping frames with 4K video, you can try and turn off the psycho visual tuning. That's a setting that tries to make lower bitrate video look better by giving priority to certain parts of the image, but it does require more processing power from your graphics card when it's enabled, so turning it off may help if your computer is struggling. 
For audio, YouTube recommends 128 kbps stereo. The streaming encoder is set to use audio track one. So here on the audio tab for track one, I'm gonna select 128 kbps. And over on the audio page, I'm gonna make sure that channels is set to stereo. The reason OBS has a separate recording tab is because for streaming, we're gonna lower the bitrate of the video to send it out over the internet. But for recording, we don't wanna lose that information from our image, so we wanna use a higher bitrate. And if I were gonna stream and record at different bit rates at the same time, usually I'd set up the encoder here so that one uses NVENC on the graphics card and the other uses the CPU with the X264 setting. But I know that my laptop here can handle streaming or recording at 4K, but it's not gonna do two different encodings at the same time. So if your computer is like mine, what you still can do if you wanna record your live stream, maybe as a backup or to edit down later, you can select the Use Stream Encoder option. And what that does is just record the same thing you are sending out for your stream. So in that way, your computer only has to encode the video once. If I'm only recording and not streaming, for 4K video, I'll usually set my rate control to VBR and the bit rate around 35,000 with a max of 50,000 kbps. And then for audio, use track two, and on our audio tab, set track two to be the highest possible bitrate available, which is 320. So that's it for the encoder settings. All I need to do to start live streaming is connect OBS to YouTube on the stream page. Select YouTube RTMPS for the service, then click connect account and log into your YouTube account in the browser window that opens. And that just gives OBS permission to stream to your YouTube account. Click OK to leave the settings dialog and we'll see that a new Manage Broadcast button has been added beside the Start Streaming button. If we click on that, we can set up our YouTube stream, give it a title and description and set the privacy and category. And you also have to check if the video is made for kids or not. Once you have those things set, you can click Create Broadcast and start streaming. And now if I go to my YouTube page, we can find our live stream and see that it's streaming in 4K. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure and check out all the Honey Optics cameras and you'll find links to those down in the description of this video. If you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot more tutorials like this coming to help you get the most out of your cameras. Until next time, bye.